Hi students, welcome back. So in our previous class, we have uh, understood what a mechanical transportation means and what are the different types of a mechanical transportation system in a building. And uh, we have also understood certain norms from National Building Code. And now let's also further understand the elevator classifications, all right? Yes. So when we talk about this elevator classification, they are classified mainly based on four categories. So it is first one is according to hoist mechanism, second one is according to building height, third one is according to building type and fourth one is according to special uses. All right. So let's understand each classification in detail. Okay. Yeah. So the first classification was according to the hoist mechanism. So when we say hoist mechanism, we have further sub classification four types that is hydraulic elevator, traction elevator, climbing elevator and pneumatic elevator. Okay. So under this, the first one that we uh, which we are going to learn is hydraulic elevator, which is also called as push elevator. We'll understand in the further slides as why. So the sub classification under hydraulic elevators are hold elevator, holeless hydraulic elevator, telescopic uh, holeless, roped holeless, and machine roomless hydraulic elevator. Okay. So uh, uh, next we have traction elevator, which we call it as a pull elevator. Under that we have gear traction elevator gear less traction elevator machine room less elevator and right elevator all right yeah so now let's understand hydraulic elevators in detail okay so okay so even okay let's understand this classification thoroughly and next jump to understanding each one of them in detail all right so we have according to the building height uh, classification was according to the building height then low rise buildings mid rise buildings and high rise buildings so we all know the meaning of all this uh, building heights also correct so it's also given here you can go through and the third classification was uh, according to the building type or nature of use okay so under that we have uh, commonly uh, called as hospital elevators residential or domestic elevators industrial elevators commercial elevators and parking building elevators okay yeah then the fourth classification was according to the special use okay so under this we have evacuation lift capsule lift double decker lift disabled access lift and fireman's lift something like this okay so now let us uh, step down in understanding all these classifications in detail so in that the very first one was understand uh, according to the hoist mechanism correct so there we also uh, understood that we have something called as hydraulic elevator so i hope you all have definitely heard this terminology called as hydraulics uh, definitely in your uh, school time right so let's understand what is the principle of a hydraulic lift is about okay so when we talk about hydraulics the person who immediately comes into our mind is pascal so Pascal's law states that the pressure applied on liquid at one point of the liquid is transmitted equally in the other directions or all directions. Okay. So it has many applications in the daily life. So some of the commonly that we see is the hydraulic lift or the hydraulic brakes that is used in any automobile system okay yes so proceeding further we need to understand various components of a hydraulic elevator okay so here 
uh, otherwise uh, when we say uh, elevator you know the common components of an elevator which we studied in a previous video right so here we will be understanding the components that makes a hydraulic elevator system okay so first and foremost we have this hydraulic piston uh, i'll just hover my mouse arrow so you can also see so this is called as a hydraulic piston which is enclosed in a hydraulic cylinder which is placed below okay then we have something called as oil reservoir or tank then we have hydraulic pump and then we have a motor in order to drive that particular pump and we have something called as a valve this valve will be helpful for us to uh, inflow and outflow of the oil that is being used for in this particular type of system okay so let's further understand in detail as how this works okay yeah so these elevators use the compression of fluids to generate the movement so to go up the pump is pushing the oil into the cylinder which will further push the piston up and then the lift car goes up is what it means uh, coming back to the previous slide you can see here so once the oil is pushed to the other level only then that particular component goes up so this goes down and here it goes up so the same principle is being used here so in order to go up the pump is pushing the oil inside the cylinder and which further pushes the piston to go up and that further leads to movement of the lift car is what it means okay to go down the valve that we have it gets opened and the oil flows in a reverse manner into the cylinder from the cylinder to the reservoir okay so with the help of a gravitational force the this particular valve is opened and the oil is allowed to flow back into the reservoir with via cylinder with the help of the gravitational force from the lift car okay so hence you happen to see the lift car coming down then we have valve closed when the oil when the valve is closed the oil can only go from the reservoir into the cylinder okay so when the valve is open the oil has a backflow meaning the when the valve is open the oil is flowing from the cylinder back into the reservoir all right so this is how the switching on and switching off of the lift car is happening through the cylinder via piston okay <coughs> sorry so the next one is the operating system so here this operating system is placed either below or beside the hoist weight hoist weight shall mean the lift shaft so this particular uh, operating system is placed either below or beside the hoist way in the machine room so the speed of these type of hydraulic elevators will be like you know maximum of 200 feet per minute so fpm shall mean feet per minute and it is used in low and mid rise uh, uh, building typologies uh, maximum of you know up to 60 feet of rise or something like that okay so next we have hydraulic uh, uh, under this hydraulic elevators we just studied different uh, sub categories right so the first one under that was in ground or hold hydraulic elevator okay so in this uh, hold hydraulic elevator what it means is this hydraulic cylinders extend into the ground i will just show it to you in the picture over here so this imagine if this is your ground level and this is the lift pit that you see so this cylinder sits further below the lift pit 
is what it means so this particular uh, in this typology the cylinder is sitting below the lift bit i am repeating again okay so where the depth of the cylinder is equal to the height of the elevator travel all right the depth of the cylinder is equal to the height of the elevator travel meaning the piston rod that needs to take you up that length will be equal to your cylinder below is what it means the, you can also see the working principle over here so this is like hold this is inside the cylinder is inside the ground and you have the piston moving up and down with the help of oil that is being passed inside the cylinder so in this case one uh, you can see that you know with the help of the gravitational force the car is coming down so the oil is going back inside the reservoir with the help of these valves so when it is in a, a static position on the ground floor this is how it looks neither the oil is going inside nor the lift car is moving above with the help of a piston here when you are when you need to go up the oil has further pushed inside the cylinder and this piston that you see further pushes the car up so this is the fundamental principle how a hold hydraulic elevator works okay so you can also see here this is the lift car that is being mounted on this piston okay otherwise the car cannot go up and down the piston is connected to the uh, elevator car or the lift car over here that makes the movement of up and down in this particular typology clear yes all right so let's move to the next uh, uh, typology so before that we have advantages of that uh, it is the short test design time and the lead time and it is very simple to uh, as a package to install wherever you want and also the minimum pit lift pit is required and also the overhead requirements are quite less and uh, it is also available both for lower and higher capacities okay so it is best suited for low uh, to mid rise uh, sort of a building and uh, the travel distance can be up to 60 feet of rise and the speed can be up to 200 feet per minute okay so this is how uh, it can take so the next one what we have is uh, under the same hydraulic elevator the second category would be whole less hydraulic elevator so in our previous thing we saw there was some sort of a hole that had to be drilled for the cylinder to be placed correct that was below the lift pit so now in this uh, hole less we have telescopic versions in place so hole less model is a solution in situations where you know uh, drilling a hole is actually not possible either due to you know you might have some sheet of rock below that area or if you have high water table or in case if your soil conditions is not that great uh, if you have certain condition ground conditions of this sort you cannot have a hold hydraulic elevator so you will have to go for a hole less hydraulic elevator okay so in this particular version what happens is the pistons that we saw is actually installed in the highest way on the either sides of the car this blue color piston what you see is located on either sides of the lift car and uh, so that is why we call it as a telescopic so you can see here you have one rod that opens out to another further it opens to one more depending on the number of floors that is why it is called as telescopic in nature okay so in this configuration this telescopic pistons are fixed at the base you can see here it is fixed to the base of the pit and you do not require any hole below the pit so these can also allow up to a maximum uh, of around six stops 
in a building so under this the advantages is you don't require a hole definitely it's a major advantage so it will eliminate in the space provision and the cost of drilling and you have you require very minimal pit and overhead requirements and uh, you can also have the front and rear openings to the lift and it is also available for both low and high capacity this is also suited for you know low and mid rise buildings and uh, you can see uh, up to 25 feet of rise can be used okay so let's uh, proceed further uh, under the hole list we have something called as rope elevator i'll just show you the image and then we will come back to the slide so this is how it looks the system looks so you have this rope way which will help you move this particular lift car okay so let's go back to that slide now so this is a combination of the rope and the piston to make a movement uh, of the lift car inside the lift shaft okay so the cables and a piston is attached to the sheave 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 shall mean a pulley you would have heard the name sheave sheave is nothing but a pulley to extend the rise of a holeless hydraulic elevator since a rope is holding the elevator car even the speed shall be easily governed there is an advantage further okay so again we don't need to you know ha drill a hole for this configuration the roped hydraulic elevators eliminate the risk of drilling uh, and you know uh, taking a risk of uh, taking a risk in any poor soil conditions etc so in addition they are also environmentally friendly since they eliminate this jag getting corroded and oil being leaked into the ground and polluting the underground area etc like that okay yeah so the advantages again is it's a minimal pit and overhead requirements and less hoist weight dimensions needed and uh, you don't need to drill a hole again and that will reduce on the cost and also the ground uh, water being contaminated or the ground soil being contaminated is also eliminated okay and this is again used for the uh, mid and high mid rise buildings sorry it is used for mid rise buildings and up to a uh, 70 feet of rise okay yeah so next we have something called as machine room less uh, hole less hydraulic elevator okay so here this image you can see the this is the machine room that we generally have to provide for any elevator it could either be on the top of the uh, elevator shaft or it could be somewhere beside the elevator shaft normally this is the conventional way but here we don't need this machine room the entire controlling system can be fixed in the shaft only okay i will repeat this hydraulic elevator does not require a fixed room to house any hydraulic machinery instead this machinery is installed in the elevator pit or in the elevator shaft itself and the controller is installed behind a locked cabinet on the wall of the elevator so a person who if he wants to access he will either use from the rear or side part of the elevator just to service the control uh, controlling machine isn't it so uh, getting compact uh, in the system that we are trying to understand of course it is so advantages is uh, it is definitely eliminating the conventional machine room and which means that you know the cost of construction and the space is uh, reduced and this also reduces the power consumption you don't need a jack hole again for this and again you are eliminating on the cost of drilling and other risk of contamination so these are very good in a low rise buildings up to 16 feet of rise okay yeah so proceeding further we need to understand what are the various advantages and disadvantages of a hydraulic 
type of an elevator system okay so first let us understand the advantages so when we talk about the advantages from an architecture and construction point of view there is definitely a major advantage because there is an absence of overhead machine room and also there is an absence of a traction equipment okay so there is no counterweights acting behind the this particular car uh, so that you know the working typology is making it more more advantages okay though the elevator load is carried by the ground and it is not carried by the structure correct because you have a piston which is fixed to the ground so the major load either while going up or going down it is taken by the ground the structure is not taking any load as such so in a way it is more advantageous the hoist way is smaller due to the absence of counterweight that is what we thought, uh, just understood about the traction equipment and you don't have any guide rails you know for the counterweight to keep uh, guiding up and down okay the cars can be lowered manually by the operation of the valves uh, in case of uh, machine failure or during some sort of uh, issued uh, in the flow of oil the machine can be manually lowered down because you have a valve if you open out the valve the oil ha will have a reverse uh, back flow happening hence automatically based on the gravitational push you will have the uh, lift car coming down you don't have to you know literally go inside and make the car come down so also there is essentially no limit to the load that this car can be lifted okay because it is a mechanical system and based on the weight uh, you need to transport from one point to another point the entire equipment can be designed accordingly because it is uh, oil which is being filled and you know pushed from one point to another so definitely we also have few disadvantages uh, from this hydraulic type uh, because it is not counterweighted uh, it requires relatively large motor space to drive the oil pump correct because it is because of the pascal's law the oil is pumped from one point to another point it requires a heavy pressure correct so in order to hand that extra pressure you relatively need a large motor to pump the oil from one point to another this is an add-on to the expense part of it okay and they are also limited to low rise and you know medium rise so uh, it has very low speed applications so we cannot use this typology to a medium or a high rise building so we can use it only for a low rise building okay so this is a disadvantage and uh, because it is an oil uh, on how do you say because it is an oil there is a physical composition that an oil uh, also works with right so when there is slight change uh, for the oil because either due to the viscosity or either with respect to the climate change the temperature in the oil might change or uh, because of the friction movement within the cylinder to reservoir there will be some sort of heat that is getting generated okay so there will be some changes happening within the oil that is used so you may have to have inspection frequently and you know you may have to even change the oil in case if it's uh, uh, reducing in terms of its viscosity okay and the noise from the pump and motor uh, can be quite a disturbing entity here because you have a pump you the pump has to pump the oil from one point to the cylinder and then from there the cylinder has to lift the piston up and then the car is getting lifted correct so in in this due course of time there will be some amount of noise that gets generated and it will be quite disturbing uh, at some point of time so older hydraulic elevators have a risk of oil leakage into the uh, substructure meaning uh, the oil uh, can be subjected to leak uh, 
and it will further contaminate the aquifer and the soil so which is again a environmental pollution so one has to be really careful while using this type of hydraulic system okay so next we have something called as traction system so traction elevators work on the principle of uh, we'll understand that works on the pull mechanism here the elevator car or the elevator cab is raised or lowered with the help of traction steel ropes or belts which are governed with the help of a grooved pulley and one side of the rope is held to the electric motor and the other side is held to the lift car okay so this is how the traction elevator works the counterweight offset the weight of the lift car and the occupants hence the motor does not have to move as much you know uh, weight making it more energy efficient than the hydraulic system here it's like a movement it's like a uh, imagine a person you know uh, taking water from a well with the help of uh, a pulley this is very similar to that so imagine you yourself are the counterweight and the bucket inside the lift well will be the lift cut so the, based on the opposite reactions you have uh, the lift car moving up and down based on the pressure that you apply okay so here the counterweight is taking care of that is what it means uh, then coming to the components of a traction elevator you have your elevator car that you know and you can see this this is this black line what you see is a elevator car okay this is the elevator car sorry this is the elevator car and this black line that you happen to see is the cable so the elevator machine so then you have a elevator machine which is kept above this and you have traction wheels so uh, you can call it as a traction wheel or conventionally if you can visualize a pulley it looks something like that then you have counterweights which is beside the lift car so this is not below the lift car but this is beside the lift car okay and you have the hoist way and you have your guide rails because without a guide rail uh, this is very difficult to move and you have your machine room lift pit and the lift car okay yeah so these are the components of a traction elevator so let's understand those parts in further detail with the help of certain pictures also uh, first one could be cables so these are steel ropes or cords which are specially designed for this particular application uh, wherein you know one part of the cable is uh, connected to the lift car and it is further wo woven around this sheave or the pulley and then the second part is connected towards the counterweights okay so the number of cables are decided depending on the speed and the capacity that you aspire for yeah next these are the counterweights yeah so this is what i said the rope the other end of the rope is connected to the counterweight and uh, one side of the rope is connected to the lift car okay so only then it goes back and forth so these counterweights are made up of steel cut plates and they are stacked one above the other like what you see in a frame so it, uh, you have a frame around it and you have steel plates that are stacked one above the other and this is uh, connected to the opposite end of the lift car okay so these also serves uh, several purposes so this helps in adequate traction at the sheave of the lift car okay then to reduce the size of the traction and also energy cost they reduce power demand because this can automatically you know go up and down to a certain extent depending on the weight all right yeah this is what will happen it is guided in its travel up and down and shaft by the two guide rails typically installed on back wall of the shaft okay 
what it means is it is guided in its travel up and down so you see this guide rail over here so these counterweights move up and down uh, accordingly all right okay